Hey, greetings and happy Sunday, wherever you might be. This is Ryan Grubb. For real stuff, real change, and I am sitting on my front porch today, enjoying a little bit of a warmer day today. Uh, starting to become springtime. Hope you guys are having a good time wherever you are with your afternoon and uh, hopefully you're not doing much before your work week begins tomorrow. My work week is always going uh, and I'm okay with that because um, there's always real stuff to change. So so I was thinking um, earlier today uh, about real change and I was talking about thinking about real uh, real needs. And I was thinking about real situations and real uh, moments. And I, thought, I started thinking about uh, sitting in my kitchen. I was like, what am I going to talk about today? And then my daughter said, you could talk about relationships. My 10-year-old daughter says, you could talk about relationships, Dad. And I'm like, huh, that's not a bad idea. Because a lot of times when uh, we think about uh, the inefficiencies in our life, um, they do uh, involve relationships, and it's not always people that it involves. Sometimes it's, it's objectives, it's, um, sometimes it's food, uh, sometimes it's uh, our jobs, our professions. Um, we have a, a misguided uh, relationship sometimes with that. Um, sometimes it might just be our inability to communicate with people. But when I started thinking about relationships, and I started thinking about the uh, the plethora of issues that could be, I started thinking about, again, our own relationship with ourselves, And I started thinking about what does that uh, look like and how can we really go after uh, or investigate or um, create an understanding that without having a solid relationship with ourselves, it's really hard to, to engage relationships in other things. Take, for example, food. Uh, and weight loss and weight reduction. There are hundreds and thousands of diets out there. Everything from uh, the keto diet, which you know I heard it works for your for your weight, to um, the Atkins diet or something similar to that, to uh, tons of calorie diets and tons of stuff that they advertise on TV. You know, uh, Nutrisystems and Weight Watchers and things like that. And I'm not again. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just I'm just telling you that there's a ton of them out there. And so people, they get involved in these things and they have, I guess when you want to call it a relationship with this, with this process, and they lose all this weight and usually they gain it back. So in my mind, I'm going, well, how healthy is that relationship? How healthy is that situation? And um, I start thinking about what else is going on inside of this person or inside of myself that keeps me from allowing myself to have a long-term relationship with losing weight and for me personally for years I had a problem with this I would I was a runner a workout I'd work out a lot and then I would reward myself with eating whatever I wanted to so I basically went and did all this work and then I treated myself like garbage by going to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's and eating two three four hamburgers uh, a thing of french fries whatever you want to call it maybe I'll drink some beers with it I'm just being real this is the stuff I had and so I was basically canceling out the things I did well with the things I was doing poorly. And that is really a bad relationship. And so if you think about yourself objectively, what you're doing is you're setting yourself for failure by giving yourself something you think feels good, but really in the long run, it's going to make you feel terrible, horrible, inefficient. And you're really going to just be angrier at yourself or more depressed. So most of us live in this type of relationship in a number of different facets in our life. And when we live like this, we create what's called an imbalance of emotional health. And that balance of emotional health represents the life that we live presently, whether it be in our marriages, in our families, whether it be with our children, whether it be in our, in our, uh, in our relationships at work. That is the representation of what we do, a very imbalanced, very... Uh, uh, uneven type of process. And 
so when you think about a healthy relationship, when you think about a a solid um, without um, without pain relationship or with pain and you deal with the pain, I'm wondering what you think that might look like. And when I think about, uh, again, back to the food thing with my relationship with food, I had this idea that if I worked out a lot, then I could eat whatever I wanted. And that just wasn't the case. At the same time, even if um, I ate well and worked out without emotional changes, that same thing probably would exist and I wouldn't really lose any weight. I may not gain a lot of weight, but I wouldn't lose or get in shape in a healthy manner because there's still things that I'm holding on to based on the visibility of the situation around me. And so one example of food for me as I finish this, this segment out of relationships was my relationship with potato chips. And what I call it now is I had a relation chip. And what that meant was, if I saw a bag of potato chips, I was going to kill it, eat it, stab it, hunt it, and it was all mine, and I had to eat it. It was almost as if I had to finish the bag or else. And after a while, this started catching up with me. I started putting chips with everything, sandwiches, I'd put it with steak. I'm like, what am I doing? So I had this really dysfunctional uh, relationship, out of sorts relationship with chips, so how did I become less committed to this dysfunction? What did I do in order to enter into a healthy relationship with potato chips? You go, well, just don't eat them, right? Just get rid of them, throw them away. Well, I could do that, but is that healthy? It's a, that's like going by the store and getting certain foods and knowing the other foods are there and you just avoid the store. No. What I had to do was I had to go in and identify why potato chips, why this relationship had become such an unhealthy entity in my life. So it really wasn't about the food as much as it was about my emotional capacity, my emotional engagement with the process of eating food. And as I went in and I identified and I used uh, techniques like tapping and visual imagery and modality identification and really became more intently involved with the process, I slowly became more, it became more recognizable why I had this problem with potato chips. And through these processes, I became, I became able to reframe my thought processes by going back to certain things, certain situations that, that were connected to my relationship with food and I could change those in my thinking. And so today doesn't mean I never eat chips. As a matter of fact, I eat potato chips pretty much on a regular basis. I just don't treat them as a dysfunction. I don't look at them as an emotional need. I actually like to eat them, enjoy them, and actually they don't, be, they're not something that identifies with my ill health. So there's a whole lot more for us to talk about when it comes to this. I'm just giving you a little bit of a taste uh, I'm just giving you a crumb of what we uh, we do here at Real Stuff, Real Change. We work with people's brain patterns. We help them create a life they want to live. We train and educate them to be safe within their own context. And we do that through various tools and techniques. One primary way we use is the tapping techniques. And we also use um, uh, lots of distractions and lots of confusing the conscious mind. So... Uh, if you are interested, if you really want to get help with your unconscious habitual programming, whether it is food or it is sex or it is alcohol or it is uh, dysfunctions at home, relationships from the past, um, fear of the future, we can actually sit down and help you help yourself. We're not magicians. We're not prophets. We're just people that want to help you take away some of the pain, some of it that doesn't even exist, so you can move into a better place and develop yourself the way God has made you to be developed. So with that being said, this is this is a, our relationship segment. Join us you know, every day. We're going to have a, a topic to discuss. We're going to get these up on the YouTube channel. It's been a little bit crazy here in the Real Stuff, Real Change world, um, and we're going to get them up on the YouTube channel. We're going to get the, the link for YouTube up. 
so you can go to it on the Facebook page. But right now, if you want to watch these videos, you can go to my Facebook page and check it out at Real Stuff Real Change. Dot, uh, Real Stuff Real Change. You can go to our website, Real Stuff Real Change. Com, and check out what we're doing. Check out our story. Check out what, why we're doing what we're doing. There's a reason behind this. We're not just doing this to whistle Dixie. We actually have experienced major mind shifts, major changes in our own lives because, and because of that, we want to share those experiences with you, the public. We believe that emotional intelligence is the key for you and me and everyone else on this planet to become much more stable and much more able to get things done and to create the life that they so much want. So with that being said, this is Real Stuff, Real Change. Happy Sunday uh, from Charlottesville. The tournament's starting. March Madness is here. And we are going to uh, have a great time over the next couple weeks watching some of these teams play each other. Uh, it should be a great time. If you're not a basketball fan, I'm sorry. That part of the segment just isn't for you. So anyway, hey, Ryan Grubb here. Take care. Have a great night. And peace.